Well, hello and welcome back. Our topic today is titled Special Trig Integrals. Now, you might be thinking we've already integrated with trig functions, but these ones are a little different, not as easy as the ones we've done. So, hence the note special. So, let's dive into this first one the integral of tangent theta d theta. So, is there anybody you can think of whose derivative is tangent theta? So hopefully you're running through the derivative of sine is cosine, cosine negative sine, tangent secant squared. Nobody has an answer, a derivative, whose answer is tangent theta. So you have to get creative. Is there another way you can rewrite tangent? So just think back to algebra 2. What's another way to say tangent? Well, you've probably guessed it. That would be sine over cosine. So in this case, we actually have to go and do a u sub. So I could pick the top or bottom. Um, I tend to pick the bottom of our denominator here, or of our fraction. So I'm going to say my u is cosine theta. Therefore, my du, of course, is negative sine theta, d theta. And I'm going to solve for d theta, of course, to get du over negative sine theta. Substitute that in. So I've got my sine of theta over u now. And this is du over negative sine theta. These, of course, will cancel out. And I'm going to pull out a negative, and I'm integrating du over u. So we've seen that, um, feels like a million times in the past couple weeks now. Hopefully that strikes you as your natural log. So I get negative ln. I'm going to substitute my u back in, which is cosine of theta plus c. Now, believe it or not, this is one you should probably memorize. It's going to pop up quite a few times, and you're going to have to do a u sub every time. So I would in, you know, ingrain in your head that the integral of tangent is negative ln of cosine theta plus c. Okay, so again, All right, number two, the integral of cosecant squared theta divided by cotangent theta d theta. So I'm going to go ahead and do my u sub right off the bat, and hopefully this denominator sticks out to you. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So I'll show my u substitution off to the side. Of course, that's negative cosecant squared theta. And that was the u part. We'll substitute it in. So I get my cosecant squared theta. This is now over u. du over negative cosecant squared theta. All right. My cosecant squared thetas, of course, are going to cancel. Pull out my negative, And I've got, again, that du over u, which is equivalent to negative ln. My u is cotangent of theta plus c. All right, now I want to do the same thing. I want to represent this answer several different ways. When if you, you, know, you did this on your own, it's just not a choice. And we found that to be the case in many problems we've attacked this year. So even though this is the correct answer, if it's not a choice, you just got to simplify it using a log property. So I could say this is ln, absolute value of cotangent theta to the negative 1, plus c. And if that's not a choice, I can go one step further and say that's ln of... Well, cotangent to the negative 1 means 1 over cotangent, which is equivalent to tangent theta plus c. So it could be any one of these answers in the multiple choice. Again, trust your gut that you did it correctly the first time, and then play with that answer to see if you can get it to match the multiple choice. All right, number three, the integral of tangent of 2 theta d theta. Now, I'm going to do it the long way, but here's where the memorizing the integral of tangent would come in very handy. So take your time on this one. I've got to pick a u for my u sub, so I'm going to pick 2 theta. That's what's in the parentheses. So my du equals 2 d theta, and of course I get du over 2. So I've got my integral tangent of u, du over 2. I'm going to pull out a one-half integral tangent of u. Now, if you know the integral of tangent, if you had it memorized, you're in great shape. 
but here's what you're going to do if you haven't memorized it. And let's just assume that we haven't memorized it yet. Believe it or not, you're going to have to do a second U sub. It's crazy. Well, again, memorize it, and we can avoid that, but here we go. I have to rewrite that tangent, because I don't know who to take the derivative of to get tangent, as sine of u over the cosine of u. Okay, just like we did in question one, tangent is sine over cosine. So I'm going to do a second u sub. I'm going to say u is my cosine of u. So I've got my du is negative sine of u. I know I'm using du twice. I think you have the idea. So I've got du over negative sine of u equals this du. Uh, substitute this one back in. So I'm going to get my 1 half, the integral, sine of u over u. I've got my du over negative sine of u. These signs are going to cancel. Pull out my negative 1 half. I've got my du over u. So this is going to give me negative 1 half du over u is that ln, and my u was cosine of u, plus c. Now I have to go back and substitute the original u that I chose in as well, so I'm going to say that is now negative one-half ln of the cosine of, I believed I used two theta for my first u, plus c. So at some point, instead of doing two u subs, you could call one a u sub and one a z sub if you wanted to call these z's, if that made you feel a little better, uh, that would be an option as well. But again, if I had memorized the integral of tangent, I could have just skipped to that step right there. Um, but instead I had to do that double u sub. So if that went way too fast for you, pause it, rewind it, play it again. Um, you're going to need to be pretty, you know, pretty quick on that tomorrow in class. All right, number four, integral of cotangent x dx. So this is going to work very similar. Um, so again, is anybody's derivative cotangent? Hopefully you're saying no in your head. So rewrite cotangent, which of course if tangent is sine over cosine, you should be writing cosine over sine. And pause it, try it on your own, go ahead and do a u sub and see what this turns out to be. Once you've got your answer, try to you know, rewrite it several different ways if possible. So again, pause me, try it on your own. So hopefully you can follow my u sub with sine x, derivative is cos x, du over cos, my cos is canceled, I got my du over u, which I'm going to say is the ln, the absolute value of sine of x plus c. Now, unfortunately in this case, um, I had nothing in front of my ln, so there weren't any log properties to follow, so this is my final answer. Number five. The integral of dx over x ln of x squared. Alright, so I'm going to attempt to pick a u, and I'd like to start with the term in parentheses, so I would pick my u as x squared. Its derivative is 2x, I mean I'll write a few out here, x squared, so I would get du equals 2x dx, du over 2x. Is that useful? Well, let's think about it. I can easily say this is a 1 on top and move my dx here if I want. I think you would agree with that. And if I put du over 2x in place of this, I don't think that's going to cancel with anything. Um, certainly these x's wouldn't cancel. They're not, you know, on the top and bottom. So, in fact, this u sub is completely useless. That did not work at all. So I've got to try something else. If I pick the entire bottom, well, if I read that out loud, it says x times the ln of x squared, so that's a huge product rule, and I highly doubt that that's going to clean up with anything. So I'm going to try just the ln of x squared. Okay, You've just got to try something until it works. You can't give up on these. So I've got du equals, now the derivative of an ln, remember, is du over u. My u is x squared, its derivative is 2x. I'm basically going to cross multiply to get that dx by itself. So I get x squared over 2x du is equal to dx. And I can simplify that a little further as really just x over 2 du is equal to dx. I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in. So I've got 1 over x. Remember this whole ln of x squared was my u. And then I've got x over 2 du. So my x's will cancel, I can pull out a 1 half, 
I've got the integral of du over u, which of course is ln of the ln of x squared plus c. Okay, so again, if you're stuck on any of these, take your time, pause it, and rewind it. The learning's in your hands. All right, just a couple more sneaky ones here. Number six, three tangent squared x dx. All right, so again, I'm gonna pull that three out. It's a simple coefficient, and I basically have tangent squared x dx in here. Now, is tangent squared anybody's derivative? Well, we know it's not sine or cosine or tangent. Um, secant is secant x tan x. Nobody's derivative is tangent squared. So you've got to get creative. Again, you could say sine squared over cosine squared, but I'm not sure that's going to be useful. One note you should probably make to yourself is that when you have squareds and you get stuck there, you need to think Pythagorean identities. All right, so the squared should be your giveaway. If you don't know that derivative, think Pythagorean identities. So this will probably be the last time I write them all out for you, and I'm going to abbreviate here. I know sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If I divide all those by sine, I get 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. And if I divide the original one here by cosine, I would get tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So the one I want to use, of course, is the one that I can replace tangent squared with. So I'm going to take this tangent squared and I'm going to solve this equation for tangent squared. So hopefully you're saying in your head, okay, I just really need to subtract over the 1. So I'm going to rewrite that integral as 3 integral, and instead of tangent squared, I'm going to put in secant squared minus 1 dx. Okay, so again, I just use the tangent squared and I use this identity here and solve for tangent squared. Now it should be pretty straightforward, and in fact, I don't even think you need a u sub. I'm going to split and integrate secant squared. Whoops. And I'm going to integrate 1. So in your head, you should be saying, who do I take the derivative of to get secant squared? And of course, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And then when I integrate 1, I get minus x. And don't forget, you want to multiply all that junk by 3 plus c. So I would say I get 3 tangent of x minus 3x plus c. And there you've got it. So just watch the identities. All right, well, we've made it to the last one of the night. Take your time on this one. The integral of sine squared theta over cosine theta minus 1. Now, this is not one where you can make like a beaver and split. Yes, there's one term, but that would have to be on the bottom for that to happen. So I am going to try to replace something. I could try a u sub and pick my denominator. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, but that won't cancel completely here. So that won't be beneficial. Again, the trick is catching that sine. Because it's sine squared, I can use one of the godfather rules or Pythagorean identities. And remember that first one is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if you wanted to solve it for sine squared, I would subtract over the cosine squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 minus cosine squared all over cosine minus 1. Okay, so I'm just substituting in one of the Pythagorean identities. Now, I'm not, still not going to do u sub. I think we can keep cleaning this up. Just think basic algebra. On the top here, these are both perfect squares. That can actually be factored. And since the 1 comes first, make sure you put your 1 first. I'm going to say that's 1 minus cos theta and 1 plus cos theta all over cos theta minus 1. Now, this should cancel a little nicely. Um, the cos theta minus 1 and 1 minus cos theta are almost the exact same. However, they are different by a negative, so I'm going to pull that negative in front of my integral. And now I'll just integrate from there. And again, I could split. I'm going to split in my head. You could write two separate integrals if you want. Um, who do you take the derivative of to get 1? Well, of course, that's 1x. Who do you take the derivative of to get cosine? That would be a positive sine. And don't forget, you're multiplying all that by that negative plus c. So I've got negative x minus sine 
theta plus c. And in fact, because we're using theta here, it's kind of improper for me to call that x. I'm going to put it as theta instead. Okay. Well, there you have it. Uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for some tricky trig intervals. Integrals. Have a great night.